I'm going to review this Jensen. It's a VM9115. It's a single DIN flip out DVD receiver. Entry level. Nice, sharp looking. Nothing too crazy, but you know, for around a low $200 price range, this is what Jensen's got. It's got a nice big knob, shiny front black gloss face, 3.5 mil jack, and a USB slide right here on the on the front with a little flippy door to close it up. This is what the screen looks like when it's detached. Oh, and by the way, I'm in my new and unimproved location. You'll see that they got me working in the warehouse now. I'm no longer working up front. I'm not allowed. So before I open this up and show you the bells and whistles of how this thing works and all the gears and wheels, this is what you get in a box. Basic manual, couple stickers, manual, installation guide, standard 16 pin harness. Jensen's been using for ever. For your own knowledge, if you ever lose this harness, actually a Kenwood standard car stereo harness would duplicate this exactly. They also include a 3.5 millimeter cord, about three feet in length. You know, for free, who can complain? These here are the ISO mounting screws, brackets and a stop piece for the back of the receiver, and an extension for the parking brake. The unit itself, pretty straightforward, trim ring, sleeve right there. On the back, that's where your 16 pin harness is going to connect to, and on this side, what you got, antenna input, this is where your brake connects to. You got a pair of stereo subwoofer outputs. You also have a front and a subwoofer preamp output. Note that there's no rear RCA. So if you wanted to utilize this in a six channel application like for front, rear, and sub, you'd have to use Y splitters connected off the fronts and do all four channels. However, of course, you will lose your fader. So that's the back. This is what's included. Now let's get to it. Okay, so here we go. Unit's on. It's in a closed position. Let's open that up. Never a disappointment with an AudioVox or a Jensen product. They always feel good and strong. The screens are not loose and jiggly. They don't have any kind of play in them. Up here, there's two buttons, which you can use to angle the monitor. You could also hit it a few times. So at night time, if the screen is too bright for you, you can turn it right off and put it into standby mode. You can touch the screen to bring it right back on again. That there's the iPod that's playing currently. We'll get to that in a second. I want to show you some other stuff first. Over here you got a mute button. You, this unit also has a pretty good feature which is um, auto volume setting so that way when you turn your vehicle off turn it right back on you can set it so that way the screen will open and retract automatically by itself and resume the volume it, that it was at or whatever volume it is that you set it to be which is a good feature so that's a really neat feature I think that that's a nice feature uh, this here is of course the main home screen there's an iPod connected so it's plugged into the front right here there's a um, jack like I showed you on the overview in the bottom right for a USB so that's where she is, and it's going to show you here when there is actually a connection and it is charging the iPod. Then you get your settings screen, which we're going to spend most of the time in this video on. The camera, we don't have one connected, but if you wanted to override it and look at whatever's going on back there behind you, your trailer, etc., you would tap the camera button and see what's going on. Now, of course, if you put your vehicle into the reverse gear manually, the screen will override show you what's on that image. Um, and it's also a very good feature with this. Um, it has a setting for the standard view of what you see in the rear view or you could also reverse and make it a mirror image which is a good feature you don't really find that in a lot of receivers so kudos for this one especially being a pretty entry level receiver it's a pretty darn good feature your regular radio uh... disc and then your auxiliary input which you know i don't know if many people use that but if you did you got three sets of rca's like i showed you on the back of the unit um, so real quick your radio, I'm not going to waste a lot of your time with the radio because, you know, it's the radio, right? So, you can set your presets. You can do three bands of FM stations, so a total of 18 presets for FM and six on AM. Um, it also has a feature which I've never seen, which is direct entry. You know, that's new to me. So, say if you wanted to type in um, 105.2. 
three. Hit OK. There you go. That's pretty neat. And this radio also has an RDS feature, which is the, the radio display feature. So that way, if your station is broadcasting with the information for the artist and the song and stuff like that, this unit will automatically detect that through the analog antenna in your car already. Doesn't cost anything. It works really well, and that's that's becoming much more and more popular. So you got that. Now let's jump on back to the menu screen. So um, real quick, I think I'll touch on the audio features because, in my opinion, most important thing of having a stereo is how it sounds. Bells and whistles are cool and all, but what's it sound like, right? So once you actually have a source playing, such as a CD, the AM, FM radio, auxiliary input, or the iPod or USB, if you're not an iPod user, you're going to get a little icon that says EQ. That's going to bring you into your EQ. Now, in another menu, there's a set where you can actually adjust the, the bandwidth of your low, mid, and high frequencies. That's new for Jensen. That's really cool, and that's for an advanced user. Uh, the manual is fairly explanatory about how that works, so you can actually go in there and just take your settings once you've adjusted them in the other screen and bring them up and down right in here. As far as your other EQ, if you're looking for a 9-band digital sound field processor or something crazy like that, you ain't going to find it. But you do have bass, middle, and treble. And also in another screen, there's a loudness feature, and they have another feature which is like kind of like a loudness feature. Um, I think they call it DSM or something like that, where it emphasizes the low and the high frequencies at a lower volume. So that's there. Balance and fader. Now again, if you're just using this and four speakers, no amplifier involved, this is going to obviously work the way it was always intended to. But if you are using a four channel amp as well as a sub amp, this radio may not be the best choice for you. Reason being, is it doesn't have a front, rear, and dedicated subwoofer preamp output. It only has front and sub. So, like I was saying before, if you had a six-channel system and you were just going to throw this in there anyway, just get us a couple sets of Y splitters on the, on the front RCA output and put it into your front and rear amplifier. And keep your subwoofer separate, of course, because you have a separate independent sub control. And if you always have a separate sub amp, I'm never going to give you any advice except to keep that proprietary and separate. So, balance fader, EQ is where we just left out of. The screen is very nice. The nit rate is very high. I believe it's around 650 or better. Um, very little glare. I, I like the screen. I mean, it's made by Audiovox. I mean, what else can I say? Audiovox is like the best, If it's got to be maybe even the best mobile video screens I've ever seen or used myself. Maybe Clarion. There's a couple other good ones around, but AudioVox is no joke, you know. Now, as far as your iPod, you got your screen work, music, video, and photos. So whatever's on your iPod, this will automatically do what you got to do. Um, as far as your music goes, you get the typical stuff, playlists, um, artists, album songs, genres, you know, podcasts. You know, if you bother to actually put all that information into your playlist, you know, I'm not one of those people. But if you did, most people are like me and just have the artists and songs. Pretty straightforward how to, how to run through it. It doesn't have, like, the alphabetical search tool, which I think is really cool. You know, if you wanted to, say, find Pink Floyd, where you would have, you know, like a, a thing on the bottom with A to Z, and you could scroll it and move it, and it's much much more high-end than flowing. This unit doesn't have that. This one you have to work a little bit to actually find your music, but once you get used to it, I can definitely see you, you know, doing just fine with it. Again, we're talking about a $200, you know, DVD receiver here, people. This is not, you know, the flagship. Um, but so far, it's really not bad. The screen is very good. It's very clear. The contrast is good. The brightness you can adjust. Um, so, not a whole lot here to complain about, except maybe the navigation but again like I said for what you're paying you know let's just see if we wanted to find say um, uh, something that starts with a C you know there's none of like this like you would expect expects an experience on a standard iPod it's not like that 
but it gives you all your songs list them out pretty well this song obviously I didn't get any oh I did get all work there you go that looks good it's got a pretty good bright sound I'd say as well I like it um, really not bad I mean definitely an impressive improvement from last year's model every year they seem to get better they really did a good job of revamping this model I must say so let's just get into the settings real quick and we'll get this wrapped up so as far as your settings go this is what you can expect to see tuner region this is really cool. So if you're not an American and you, you actually utilize this from another country, you could use the tuner and actually the language from all these things. Korea, Europe, South America, China, Arabia, South America. I mean, holy cow, that's a crazy thing. RDS, that's the radio display I was telling you about. The beep, you turn it on and off. Clock, you can make a 12 or 24 hour mode. When you see that arrow, it means you got some more. It's got a calibration. Wallpaper, you can change. Wow, that one's pretty cool. That's not bad either. Some pretty good stuff in here, actually, huh? I'm going to go with space. That looks hot. All right, so we'll go back. Um, general settings, we're already done with that. Language, we already talked about. That's going to be the same for whatever language you're using. Um, your ratings, you can actually set a four-digit passcode. So if somebody hijacks your radio, you know, self-explanatory password. Parental control, that will be just for DVDs. Your audio, the DRC, not DRS. I think I called it DRS before, excuse me. DRC. What that is, is kind of like, it's an attenuation feature for lower volume. So if you typically listen to your stereo at a lower volume level, that's going to accentuate and make... The DRC is going to attenuate and make all the higher and lower frequencies sound much more ro robust at a lower volume level. Loudness feature, very similar. Subwoofer, you can turn it on, turn it off. It's also got a sub low pass filter. You got three choices. Could be better, but again, 80 hertz, 120 hertz, 160 hertz. Most people obviously use the 80. Um, and then you have a Q setting, again, for your bandwidth. Make it however you need it to be. Nice toy to play with. And then you got your mid Q. Same thing as a bandwidth. The source. You can change all the levels. Or, like, say, Pioneer has something called SLA, sound level adjustment. So when you switch from one mode to another, this will adjust the volumes accordingly. Your hardware, like I was saying before about the camera, you have a choice. You're not just stuck with what they give you. You can make it normal or a mirror, so a reverse image. So you don't have to turn your head and think, is this left, is this right? It could be either way you want it to be. Video input, you could turn it on, turn it off. You could also change the region. So if you have NTSC, which is what we use here in America, PAL for Europe, and then auto, it'll... Obviously, most people would use, use auto. <coughs> but if you're in America like me, who cares because you're always going to use the same thing, NTSC. Um, this here is for the monitor, so that way it'll turn, turn on and open by itself and close by itself. Or you can turn that off and do it manually. All right, I'm going to leave it auto on. Um, demo mode we don't need because I am the demo. Take me home. Um, now your discs, I don't have an mp3 encoded disc, but if you did, it would actually display all the artists and titles and stuff like that. Notably, this unit does take a minute, especially if you're putting an mp3 encoded file in there like I am doing right now. It does take a little bit longer than some other units that I've seen. A little laggy on that. And that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, this is a really nice unit for the money. I mean, hey, around 200 bucks, man, you really can't go wrong. And AudioVox, I mean, what can I say about AudioVox? They're a great company. I, I've watched that company blow up over there on Marcus Boulevard in Hawpog, New York. They are just huge. They own God knows how many companies now. They have Prestige, AudioVox, Jensen... Acoustic Research, Advent, you name it, man. They, they got it. So, 
it's a winner. So if you're looking for yourself like a middle of the road or a semi entry level DVD receiver, give the Jensen a look. I'd say, I'd say it's okay. I like it. That's the Jensen VM9115, folks.